Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Enigmatica 6 Expert. Uh, so since the last episode, it has been a little bit of time. Uh, you can see that I have basically overhauled the Sylph. We have a lot of things in here now. I also removed the sarcophagi from the middle. Um, originally, I was going to have them here, but I've changed some of my plans uh, for this room. I still have them on the sides, uh, and I think that should be sufficient. And then we'll have uh, this middle part here. And then once we plug up the aqueducts, we'll have water kind of falling into this room. Anyways, uh, let's see. I did put the sylph in the middle and just kind of framed her in. Uh, the reason being, there is, uh, she's extremely happy now. Um, it doesn't it doesn't seem like it wants anything else. So, uh, it's actually at maximum happiness. If we take a look inside of here, yeah. You can see, I mean, she fills up a diamond chest pretty much every harvest. To the point that I actually, I need to speed up item withdrawal from this chest because uh, sometimes some of the stuff at the bottom will uh, just keep building up because she she keeps producing it uh, faster than we're able to pull it out at the moment. So, uh, and as far as pulling it out, I've got entangled diamond chests here just feeding right into there. So, I mean, you can see it's pumping out items very, very quickly, but it's just not enough. So, the nice thing about the seal, if we don't have to worry about her overflowing because, uh, you know, if she doesn't have a place to put things, she doesn't produce the things. So, uh, over here, you can see all the different stuff that we're producing. So, I'm not going to go over all of it, but uh, we'll just kind of pass through this area a little bit slowly so you can see. But we do have all the mystical flowers, all the mystical mushrooms, all the glimmering flowers in there. And then, of course, over here, I'm still kind of filling things out. So, this is for, like, more things, basically. Um even though she's at maximum happiness, I can still put more things in there. So, worth noting. Um, but we're producing pretty much uh, the majority of the plants that we're going to need. Uh, and then some. Uh, so, she's doing quite nice. Uh, over here to the, the bees. Uh, basically, we have all four of those apiaries set up at this point. Uh, and they are running. And they're producing a wide variety of things. Uh, this one, for example, we've got redstone bays, diamond bays, forest bays, sooty bays, clay bays, emerald bays, quartz bays, uh, and there's also lapis in there and RGB. And then over here, uh, we've got uranium, frosty, rocky, osmium, forest, clogged, uh, there's regal, tin, obsidian. Most of this is just basic bee breeding. Now, over here, I did have to do some, um, some in-world bee stuff. Uh, we're actually going to be doing one other bee today, but we have glowstone, uh, slimy, blaze, gas, basals, bees, uh, normal, normal bees, sandy bees, and dusty mum bees over here. Uh, I put a hopper in here. Uh, I actually need to remove this. This was actually stuff that I had dropped when I was messing around in here, actually. But uh, the centrifuges are just kind of kicking through all that stuff. Uh, and you can see over here we have a much larger variety of things that we are producing at this point. So uh, we do also have diamond bees, emerald bees. Uh, you know, I bred a couple of those really basic ones. But like I said, we're going to do one additional bee because I have one additional slot in this one. Uh, and there's a bee that I want to add to that. Uh, it's actually going to be the first thing that we start off doing, I think. And then uh, beyond that, I've been getting over kind of a, a small series of builders block and I've kind of figured out uh, where I where I want to go next with this because I was kind of like, well, how do I want to proceed? You know, of course, I've, bring, I've been bringing this up, uh, but I figured out the next direction that I want to take. But I did spend a lot of time working on myself, uh, collecting all these different plants and stuff. Uh, from across the dimensions. Now, some of these plants that are out here don't actually produce anything. Uh, you know, there's a couple. For example, like the yucca stuff that's here, it doesn't seem to produce anything. Uh, also, honeydew and squash and cantaloupe. Um, also, nature's aura uh, plants, they don't produce anything. But for the most part, most of the stuff is producing uh, stuff for our self. And I'm going to leave this pipe open so that we can actually start seeing items traverse through our base. Which is really kind of the best part about having visual item pipes. But we have them all under the floor right now. Um, for that bottom floor. But let's go ahead. We are going to, for the very first time, we are going to kill ourselves a wither. Now, 
we're going to come out just a little ways. Oh, and I don't know, is it going to count my spells as ranged? I'm not for sure. But just to be on the safe side, we're going to grab ourselves a sword. And right here, that should be good. All right, so we're going to go ahead and summon ourselves a wither. Uh, where did you go? There you are. Okay, there we go. And let's go ahead and burn it down. Now, hopefully our spells will keep taking effect after it goes outside of that uh, range damage. It is. I thought it would, but I don't know where he's firing his shots at. They're just like super wide. Which is fine by me, but. There we go. Okay, and then right over here, he left us uh, some Wither Roses. I want to go ahead and grab these. Basically, anytime he kills uh, mobs. So is it just one? One Wither Rose? Uh, let me put on my. Uh, magnets okay yeah it looks like it's just one uh that's fine we're gonna see if we can farm this in the sylph though i'm not for sure if it'll work but i do want to try it you know and we'll have to see if he managed to uh deal any damage to us or not uh not really um a little bit i guess but we can just pop our regen there we go okay now let's add the wither rose to the sylph we're gonna see if she can farm it we'll give her a little bit uh, let me find an open spot that's not in the main walkway, of course. Because we don't want to be getting wither every time we walk through this room. Uh, there's mushrooms back there. You can tell I'm starting to run out of uh, real estate, unless I go vertical with it. Steadily running out of real estate here. Uh, so we're going to put that there, and of course it's going to take her a little bit um, before she will notice it, so... Uh, we're going to have to give this just a little bit of time. Okay, she is uh, farming the Wither Roses for us. So I figured she could, but I wanted to make sure. Uh, but we have 12 uh, so far. So I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these. Uh, now the Nether Star, I don't really have any use for that. I just <laughs> I need the Wither Rose. So we'll just dump that into the system. Uh, now next up, let's go ahead. Let me go ahead and order some... That's not enough. It's enough to get started, though. But let me go ahead and get a few diamond blocks. I'm going to need one more. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and run this diamond ore through. And let's go ahead and grab ourselves a couple diamond bays. Throw those into there. Get those breeding. What went here? Not for sure. Um, I'm assuming that I put it in the wrong spot. I put something in the wrong spot. Because usually I keep my breeding pairs in there. Actually, one more of these. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and breed ourselves up three diamond bays. And then while that's going, we're going to go ahead and set up our wither rose. Now I'm hoping that this works. Um, because I'm thinking our bee should be able to access it through the corner. Uh, and not have to go directly on top of it. But I think the route that we're going to take is just to try to block it off so no other bees uh, will come over to it. Um, I'm going to try this. We'll have to try a couple things here maybe, but uh, we'll start from what would be the most favorable if it works out. This is one of the, basically the, the poisonous blocks that we're going to have to deal with in a special way. Or the, the dangerous blocks, I should say. So let's go ahead, we'll break that, and what we're going to do is we're going to put our Wither Rose in right there. Uh, now, none of our bees should be able to access it or get hurt by it, but I'm thinking that the... It's possible. <laughs> I don't know for sure if this is going to work, but uh, it's possible that our bees that need to access it will be able to access it. And that's what we're going to shoot for. Now, let's take our diamond bay. 
Uh, and this one has to basically come in contact with gassed pollen. And the way that I've found that I like to do this, I mean, you could set it up and have them in like a pen or something and set it up so that you make sure that your bees fly in the direction they need to go. Oh yeah, the gas bee. The gas bee is, yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Okay, what we're going to do, let me, uh, the gas bee, let me just lock this in to make sure it doesn't get out um, before we're ready. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shift the gas bee stuff over. Because it works out better if it's far from the hive. Because that way they don't instantly teleport back in. So the gas bee will have to go all the way over there now. But it's still got a little bit left in the hive. So we'll just leave that locked for right now. That's fine. It gives me time to get my other diamond bees together. Okay, so now we're ready to unlock our gas bay. It'll take it a second because it's got to find the new mushroom, probably. It's found its mushroom. It's trying to get in there right now. And we'll give it just a second. They don't take very long on the flower. So that's why I really don't mind doing this manual because it only takes a second. It honestly takes less time, generally. Maybe a little bit longer in this case because my gas bee was in the wrong spot. Or the mushroom for it was in the wrong spot. But generally it doesn't take longer than... Okay. Yeah, I got uh, I got two of them done. Uh, let's go ahead because I do want one more so I've actually got a breeding pair. But let's go ahead and lock that gas bee in. Uh, and we're going to give this netherite bee just a second. Hopefully it's seeing the flower. Did you get it? Or are you still having troubles? Like I said, it's just kind of a test to see if... Uh, it went back in there. That's a good sign. Okay, so what I'm going to do... I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull the extraction module out of this for right now. And that way we can make sure and see... If the netherite honeycomb comes in here. And if so, then that's good. I didn't see pollen dropping off. But that's not... That doesn't necessarily mean... They didn't have it. I've noticed sometimes, you know, it doesn't really visually show the pollen. So we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, let's unlock that one. I don't think that it actually produced it. Let me go ahead and pull it up for right now. Ah, it did. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I forget. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't produce it until it leaves the hive. So it is actually managing to get the wither rose. And it looks like this bay might be harvesting off of that because it counts as a flower. And that's why I was wanting to be careful, block this off, because I know the bees are going to be extremely interested in it. Uh, but just using trap doors, it does seem to work, which is quite good. Let's make sure, because they seem like they're a little bit more stuck now. I was hoping they go on top of it, because... No? No? No, I don't think... I think he lost interest and said, well, okay, I can't get it from there, so I'm going to go over here. Yeah, it takes the netherite bee a little bit of moving around. Of course, on a server, this running con it's not really a big deal for us. And then we'll be producing this. It's 50% chance that we're going to get nine ancient... Yeah, we'll be good on ancient debris. Yeah, and any other bee that goes over there thinking, well, that's a flower, um, it eventually loses interest. He's got pollen, I can see it. He just gets a little bit confused going back to the hive. Okay, so yeah, that is... That's working, and we're starting to get netherite... Honeycombs, and we have all of our netherite bees at this point. I'm going to go ahead and just lock that in, and that can start running. All right, now the next thing I'd like to do is, let's go ahead and get a diamond chest. And I want to deal with our metals, right? Uh, because the way that we're going to do metals within this pack, and the way that we have been doing in them, is I don't just want everything to get processed. I want to keep some of our chunks around and... You know, only process what we need instead of just voiding on the ingots. Uh, so what we're going to do, uh, let's get our diamond chest. Let's get some crafting modules. Uh, let's get a high extraction. Uh, might as well take a speed because we can. Uh, let's also take, well, let's also get a master corporea spark. Uh, let's get a tag filter. And let's go ahead and get that ordered, because we're going to make an entangled block. Uh, and then let's pop over 
And actually, I'm going to go ahead and order stuff for another uh, entangled block, I think. Um, but let's go ahead and let's grab a few things that I run out of a lot. I'll get everything added in, but there's certain things that are a little bit more uh, of a priority. Uh, we'll start off with these four, for example. And let's come on down. Uh, of course, we're going to be running this through our create system. Um, but let's do an entangled block right here. This is one of those things that's like long overdue. This is the crushing chest. Because uh, I'm pretty sure that this one is filled up. Let's go ahead and grab that and we're going to link it over to there. But I believe this one is all filled up with the recipes it is. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're just going to set up a few recipes over here. And these are going to be for um, like gold chunk, redstone chunk, iron chunk, and lead chunk. And when of course whenever we process these, um, we're not going to count on the chance stuff. We're just going to look at specifically what it would get if it ran one ore right um, and then let's see this through the washer uh, gets us 15 yeah so I guess what we'll do and what about the redstone one this makes eight so technically we could have made it made it set up the recipe a little bit easier but we're gonna say that that makes a gold ingot that makes eight redstone that makes an iron ingot of course, we're going to generally get a little bit more than that, um, but we're going to be banking on the minimum, uh, and then it can just, we're not going to set our limits to fill it completely up, of course, uh, so that way you can just store the extra and, you know, then we have a little bit of over, a little bit of overflow at that point. So we'll go ahead and get that set up, and uh, like I said, I'll add the rest of the stuff in there, but this is just a point to start from, so... This is another thing we're actually going to be automating. I don't know if we'll get to it today, but we're going to have basically a a few episode series of just automating and getting things organized as we begin kind of pushing into some of the later stuff. Uh, Batania, Nature's Aura, um, the rest of our lightning crafting stuff, a lot of miscellaneous little things. I could, realistically, I could just as easily do this. And put it here because it's not like I'm going to be sending a ton of items. Uh, originally, I had something else in my mind and was going to be doing that slightly different. But if we do it like this, now we see gold actually getting ordered. Uh, so it should be sending the stuff over to craft it up and then it'll keep a thousand on hand for us. So there we go. And you can see that getting processed now. And then, of course, we're going to get a lot of byproducts as this runs. Uh, so we should stay pretty well filled on about everything. But I tell you what, it doesn't hurt at all for us to have this extra entangled block. Um, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it here this time instead. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and snip that off. And do the crystal chest there. And that way the stuff will automatically, instantly get sent over as soon as it gets made. And that's basically just going to speed up the, the speed that the items come in. Uh, you know, we did, we did that over there with the, what, Pneumaticraft stuff, I think. Uh, and that way we can we can keep a certain, uh, a certain stockpile on hand of this stuff. And may even bump it up to 1500, we'll see. Uh, and actually, while I'm over here, let me go ahead and order... Uh, the filter increase module. Let me go ahead and just order that. Um, because that way we can store more uh, things and just anything that we're going to be keeping stocked in this manner. You know, we're stocking some with Batania. Uh, some of the stuff, like with thermal, we're stocking a little bit differently, but I think that's how I want to do the metals uh, in this case. Plus, it cuts out the crystal chest. Because that was kind of a temporary thing anyways from our, from back early on. Okay, it's not updating. Um, what I think I'm going to do, maybe is send it to this chest. And then it can pull it out because it's requesting it. It can pull it out from there. And if this works, then what we'll do is we will 
do something a little bit different than I was originally planning on this episode and switch gears. Because the reason I did the netherite is because I have a plan that we were going to do for this episode. But there's a few other things that we could do. But I'm thinking if this works, then we'll just we'll push on to our alternative storage method that we're going to do. Okay, it's sending the gold over to there and then it's getting automatically pulled out. Okay, it is working now. And it's just, it's auto-requesting more uh, every time it gets more gold in. Okay, so that is working. It just, it cannot feed directly into the drawer. We could do it with subnetwork, but feeding over to our storage and then just having it pull from the storage um, for requests like that seems to be seems to be the best method i think we'll let that run and what we'll do instead because uh, originally we were going to be doing some other machine automation but i think addressing this uh, plus it's time because i have this uh, and i've been keeping you know i've been keeping it fairly cleaned out because i have these chests back here that store up a lot of stuff uh, but i think it's time to completely get rid of all of this chest mess so what we're going to do instead we're going to switch gears and we're going to turn our attention over to occultism because I want to solve our, basically our storage issue and completely start changing over to the dimensional storage stabilizers, uh, which takes a Zevius Spectral Compulsion, uh, any kind of runes. Um, I think we pretty much have, well, we have to get the Ender Inventory. No, we don't. That one's really easy. I was thinking of the Ender Storage. Uh, which also isn't that bad for us at this point, but uh, let's see. Let's take a look at Azevius' Spectral Compulsion. That is a very basic ritual. Now, as far as upgrading these, that takes Strigiors. Not really what I set out to do, um, per se, but this is fine. This is actually going to be extremely easy. Okay, so let's go set up... Um, well, we'll go ahead and get the stuff together that we're going to need for the us. And actually, I should check on the Dimensional Crystal Matrix. Oh, Dimensional Crystal Matrix, though, takes Strigior's Higher Binding. Uh, not really a big deal. And that means we could push on to the Tier 2. It's kind of strange because you can't... There's no use for the Tier 1 if you can't make the Crystal Matrix, so... Uh, and that's any kind of God Shard. Not bad at all. Okay, so what we're going to do... Let's go ahead and mark that, mark that, mark that... Like I said, most of the stuff is just it's just doing it. Um, but the impure purple chalk, because we are going to need this. Um, let me see. What we have set up at the moment is a Zevia Spectral Compulsion. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll go ahead and craft the, the Tier 1 Dimensional Stabilizers. And I know there's a chance that we could probably get some of the stuff from the quests. Go ahead and take that. But yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and shoot for tier twos because I was wanting to get my metals all sorted out and seems like the best method. All right, so we're going to go ahead and order our, is that bronze or is it copper? It's bronze. Looks like it's running iron now. That's good. Uh, let's go ahead and order ourselves a uh, hundred and eight bronze ingots. And then, because uh, that's going to make us our tier one dimensional stabilizers, because I'm going to want six of these. I'm going to go ahead and go for the full setup. You can do it with just one or two, uh, but we're going to go ahead and be shooting straight for um, maximum size. We're going to need a few of these today. Let me go ahead and just order 10 of the other stone pedestals. But like I said, there's a chance we may get some of the stuff from quests as well. But And then let's go ahead and whip up six of these. And we will have to get the purple chalk, so we'll have to do a little bit with blood magic today, I think. Right, I think it's, uh, well, it's tier three. And whenever we get tier three, we can get the pool uh, reagent as well, which will be good. But basically, we just need bigger storage at this point. Modular storage is an option, but uh, it's still very limited with only having, I think, four slots at max size. Or 400, I mean. Which is a lot, but we might as well go ahead. Instead of wasting our time doing that, we might as well just go ahead and do the occultism because I was planning on wanting to do this anyways. But let's go ahead and order um, 10 of those, 10 sets of the us. 
But then let's go ahead and get ourselves some books of binding. And of course, we're going to bind these to our occultism book, our Akashic Tome occultism book. And I'm going to need uh, seven of these, of the foliat ones. So there's that. Uh, and then in order to make the uh, storage actuator base, we are going to need the other stone pedestal. We're going to need Master Corporeal Spark, two gold inlays, and a Nebu ingot. Okay, now we should be all set at this point. So let's go ahead and pop over to Adam. We'll go ahead and get all of our Azevia stuff crafted up. Then we're going to have to get the purple chalk in order to do the uh, the rest of it. This will just get our starting stuff in place. Uh, so for the storage actuator base, that's going to be the... I'm going to need more sacrificial bowls, actually. Yeah, because the actuator bases, they take 12 in order to craft those. Uh, so we are going to need 8 more bowls okay so we got our bowls let's go ahead and pop back over we should be all set now we can get this thing underway and we need it anyways so like i said not really what i had anticipated doing today but that is all right we're just going to go ahead and toss down our bowls uh, and then we're going to add in like the nebu master corporea the two gold inlays, the other stone pedestal, and then we're going to drop in one of our books of binding. These craft so much faster on here than they did on Spellbound. I love it. Like the occultism stuff. So there's that. And then for the, the tier one, it's going to be one of these, two of these, Four of these, four of these, that, and then one of our books of binding. Oh, there's so much. Yeah, you don't even need time in a bottle in this case. On on Spellbound, it took a lot longer um, than it does on here. This doesn't take all that long. And then, of course, we just have to repeat this until we have six of those now like i said there is a chance we can get these from a quest i know some people have gotten them from quests and stuff uh, but that's fine i mean they're not that expensive for us so i mean if we had gotten them from a quest then that would have been good but i just want to go ahead and make the maximum size one so there we go that'll be our last tier one dimensional storage stabilizer so, uh, using six of these, I want to say it's like a thousand slots or something. If we go on up to tier four, it's like over 4,000 slots. We'll get more into that uh, in a little bit. But we're done making these. Um, unless I decide I want another storage system, which is a possibility. Um, but it's definitely not something like soon on the horizons or anything like that. Let's take a look at this point. We got that. We only need one of the bases as well. What's it take for the stable wormhole? Wormhole frame. Okay, that's actually really, really cheap. Um, so then we can go cross-dimensional with this, of course. But uh, for these, both both of these, we need Strigior's higher binding. This is just crystal glass, corundum clusters of any kind, calx of end. Uh, for that. And then for this, it's dimensional shards, the tier one, the ender slime, uh, god shards, and blocks of silver. Okay, I've been getting a bit of the stuff together, but we are going to need another enchanted petal. Uh, if you recall, we made these a bit back. And I'm going to go ahead and whip up a smelt spell real quick. Just so we can smelt up that. We can smelt up that. We're going to be using... I had spent the time to actually uh to actually make that because we were going to be using it today but oh does it need oh i don't need to smelt it for this method that's okay i can do this method here but okay we got our stardust so we'll go ahead and get our petal uh these and i need to look and see if these are going to be used a bit because if so i need to add them to the recipes i seem to remember looking and they weren't used for much it was mainly like purple chalk and then the stuff that we've already done which is like the tier three book yeah i mean that's it is just purple chalk so 
Uh, though we will need it for the artisanal chalk. Yeah, we're going to need quite a bit there. So, yeah, it might be worth setting up, but not until end game. So, uh, okay, so that's that. And that'll be everything that we need for the chalk. But in order for us to get the tier three blood orb, this is going to require a magician's blood orb, which is the mana tablet um, and 50,000 life points. What's the... the drain's not very high though. And it does mean we'll need to upgrade our altar, but that's fine. That's not a problem. Because, of course, we don't have to do the specialty runes. I'm not ready to get into those just yet. The mana tablet's going to require that we have a rune of mana. Uh, this is an Isis shard, which I actually think I have those. Mana steel. Uh, these are the two big things. Mana pearl and ingot of the skies. Mana pearl requires infused ender pearl. Moonstone's easy enough to make, but infused ender pearl. Block of dimensional. It's a lot of, a lot of power. That's why I want to get this up and running. And then block of crystallized chorus which is going to require the fluid mixer for that. Uh, we can actually make the liquid chorus with our boil extractors. Probably going to be our best route, I think, is to go ahead and set that up because we're going to need it. Uh, and then we will need the ender slime as well, which can also be made with our boil extractors. So we'll go ahead and get the fluid mixer first. I'm going to go ahead and order our turbine blades. Yeah, there it goes. And then there is our fluid mixer. Okay. So that's going to finish us up a quest. And this does require a little bit of pressure. We'll just put it over here. That's fine. Uh, for the Ender Slime and the Chorus, I think what we're going to do is our Boil Extractors. Now, I'm probably not going to need... Well, I mean, if I'm going to be setting up the trees, I might as well at least plan on making uh, a couple of these. For now, I'm just going to make two. And I'm going to go ahead and buy a Dragon Tree Sapling and a Pythandron or something like that. Pythandendron. And let's see, we need Chorus Nilium and Shadow Grass. Okay. So for this, it'll probably be quickest just to pop over to the end. Uh, so let's go ahead and just take a bit of the us. Alright, so let's pop back home, and we'll go ahead and set these up, figure out what kind of a shape we're looking at, uh, and then I'll figure out where I want to put them in the sylph room. So, there we go. About time. Okay, and if we put this in, well, let me put it somewhere where I can actually see it. I think finding the base of this is going to be great fun. I can see it's not activated right now. Uh, I guess we'll just build a tree over here. That might be the best route. Um, right here. I know I have like no space. And probably just move it over. Uh, you know, I mentioned a bit back. Most of our trees, they haven't been an issue. But this one probably will be. So let me just order cardboard box. I think it, if I recall, it just has to be the base. And that's all that really matters. So we'll just grab... One of these with a cardboard box. Oh, my break spell actually doesn't work on that. Interesting. Uh, but then we can put this in right here. Shift right click to remove our cardboard box. And then I want to say that we can just bring up the rest of this. And then we're going to need some leaves. I don't know. It's not... Uh, it's actually not seeing that. Okay, well, let me try it with the leaves then. Okay, yeah, it's still not registering them, so I'm going to be careful and just take all of it uh, through cardboard boxes. Okay, it's working now. So, yeah, we just had to cardboard box all of it. Uh, so, dragon tree logs and dragon tree leaves. Uh, then let's go back out here and do the other one. All right, let me give this a second. There we go. Okay, so that one's working too. All right. Then we just have to give those a little bit of time to get the liquids that we need. Uh, we're producing both of these, and we're just going to have a dedicated uh, fluid mixer for that, so we'll just move over however much. But I need at least 750 of the, the chorus, so...
And then while that's building up, we're going to need to get ourselves an offering altar. Um, what token is that? Token of Sorrow. And we also have to get ourselves a Soul Bait. That's another mob I really need to probably get put into the mob farm. Okay, so something like in here. There's one. Yeah, here's a few. Like I said, they're pretty common normally. But it's just not something I'd ever come out hunting. So. And there we go. There's our token of sorrow. Which is actually the last token that we hadn't made. So that completes a quest. And we do have plenty of our liquid over here. So I'm going to go ahead. Take our liquid chorus. We're going to put that into there. And then we're going to get our liquid slime. Dump that into there. And that's going to start running. That's going to make us our liquid chorus. Or our crystallized chorus. And that way we can get our ender pearl going. Our mana pearl. It's going to be these three things. This will be our first one. Um, and this one's going to take probably a long time to craft. Because it takes 15 million power. Uh, but it is possible, from what I understand, to find these mana pearls in uh, 18 million power. Okay. Yeah, this is going to take a while. I'll probably, uh, while I'm waiting, probably go ahead and maybe try to make an, another in energizing rod or two. We definitely have to expand on the energizing rods. So I was planning on doing that before I had to make these. But but thanks to the way that our metal wants to be handled, um, we're going ahead and pushing on. Uh, I'm also going to need a couple infused stone. And then we're going to go ahead, pop out a little ways, and summon ourselves a wilden. That, that, that. And we'll get this activated. Because we're going to need another Wild and Tribute. And I think this is the last one that we need. Uh, well, we need them for the sigils. And if we get magic, yeah, we'll be getting magical feathers. Um, I need to look at that too. Because I think we're getting semi-close-ish to it. But I think there's still a couple other things from progression that we're going to have to get for our permanent creative flight. Let's see, can I do one of my, uh, like my affliction spell, be good. I guess not really a big deal. I can go toe-toe -to -toe with this guy without issue. But there we go. There's that. So we'll need a couple more of those boss kills, but not many. Go ahead and throw that into there. Um, and then we are going to need... Uh, lastly, a conduit. Now, I'm going to craft this one manually. This will probably be the last one that we craft manually. Um, just because we're actually meaning to meaning to automate these, but we're going to be crafting something else manually with some lightning craft today. The other thing that we're going to be crafting with lightning craft is our spirit of calling. And luckily, we've already got all the runes made, so this is really, really easy for us. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then one, two, three, four, five on those. There's our spirits of calling, and there is our conduit. And let's see, these, uh, you do get double for the nether one. So let me go ahead and order like a bunch of sun metal blend, and we'll go ahead and get our offering altar at this point. Let's find our offering altar, and we're going to go ahead and, well, let's see, let's visualize it. It's going to be 36 poppies. Okay, but this is crafting us up a bunch of the infused sun metal at this point. Let's go ahead and set up our offering altar. Now, this is going to be one of those things that have to go out side um originally i was thinking about putting it on the pyramid but the structure is just so big and bulky um i don't think i'm going to but for now we're going to put it in right over here until we figure out a proper place to put it it's not something that we're liable to be using a lot uh it's more of just an on occasion sort of thing but as time goes on we will you know we will use it a bit so 
and then we just need our uh, infused sun metal. I've started getting stuff together for some more energizing rods because we need to get them. We need to get them made, but uh, we're gonna go ahead though. We've got our infused sun metal. Uh, I can only do sixteen at a time. That's fine. Honestly. Oh wait. It's, yeah, there we go. And then we'll just give it a second. And now's a good time actually to throw in the magnet ring. And here they come. Raining down from the sky. And once again, if you use the nether version, which takes the arcane gold, uh, you know, you get a little bit better output. We would get a half stack uh, from running that. But honestly, 16 is probably good at the moment. And then if we need to make more, you know, let's just do that again. You know, super easy. And we just need one of the ingot of the skies for now. For our rune of mana. We also need two, uh, four mana steel, Isis God Shard. And I'm going to go ahead and throw this stuff onto there. So once our mana pearl gets done, which is about a quarter of the way, which isn't great, but I've got some footage to edit and I need to make more energizing rods anyways. So, you know, I've got other stuff that I can do while it charges up and it'll get faster once we get uh, those additional energizing rods. But at this point, we do need to upgrade our um, altar. So I'm going to go ahead and get that. But we're going to go ahead and place out our runes to... This will be, yeah, that'll be the base. So we're going to come up right there and right there. Okay, so we do that. And then this should now be a tier three. Uh, let me go ahead and fill in the floor a little bit there. Okay, now at this point, let's pop back over. Um, that should be all set up. And before we even try to make this, I want to make ourselves our sacrificial knife, uh, which does require uh, that we get the sort of sapping. And this is pretty straightforward for the most part. We're going to need sat uh, shadow gem, two soul shards, and let's see, what's it take to make the necrotic focus? Oh, that's dirt cheap. Let's go ahead and order the stuff for that. So there's that. And there's our necrotic focus. Uh, we're also going to need a couple of these. We're going to need uh, a little bit of nether wart. I'm actually going to go ahead and grab three. And in addition, uh, we also need a gas tier, and then we need a potion of harming. All right, so let's go ahead and get ourselves some awkward potions. And then for the potion of harming, it's going to be fermented spider eye. Uh, well, we don't have to have that version. And then it's going to be spider eye. And that'll get us our potion of harming. Uh, let me pop over and grab our old Eidolon stuff. Mainly just the Brazier. Right, so we got the Brazier, the Necrotic Focus, the Stone Hands. Um, we are going to need a Flint and Steel as well. There's our Potions of Harming. And, uh, oh, Gas Tear. But let's go ahead and put in that. And then we're going to go one, two, four... Bump, and then we'll do our necrotic focus. Uh, the sword goes into the necrotic focus. It's going to hold on to that. And then we just do our soul shards, our shadow gem, our nether star, our nether wart, and our potion of harming. And there we go. There's our sort of sapping. Okay. So now all we got to do is throw this in to the altar with uh, 7,000 life points. So I will have to get just a little bit more. Okay, we got plenty now. So I'm going to throw that in there and get our sacrificial knife crafted up. There is our dagger of sacrifice. And then what we can do, we don't have uh, sacrificial runes at the moment, but that's okay. Because we can just do this and fill this up fairly quickly. And I could even do a heal spell. Like if I didn't do the extend time, 
and we instead just did like amplifies. And for example, if I run this down, that instantly heals me all the way up. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know if we want to do the regen. The regen's a little bit slower than just going with the instant health, honestly. Uh, but we'll be able to craft whatever we need to craft with that. Um, just using our heal spell, basically. We've got our mana pearl now. I went ahead and changed that over. I thought I was recording. Then I realized I wasn't. Uh, but this does take another 7,000 life points for the moonstone. So, just a heads up. But we're going to throw that in. We're going to get that running. And this is going to take quite a bit of mana. I went ahead and topped that off. But it does appear it's going to take quite a bit. Okay, so there is our elemental runes quest done. We did get our final rune. That does mean we finished this quest. Which gave us a bunch of living rock. Um, also, I think... I mean, there's a few of these that are just like... I mean, that, I don't have any need for it. Wither Rose. Oh, you get a Potion of Harming. Okay, well, now we know. If you make the Necrotic Focus, you get a free Potion of Harming. So, that's okay. We're going to go ahead and get our Mana Tablet. Token of Undying Friendship. Rare. Nature's Aura Box. An Epic nature's aura box token of rage more infused sun metal uh gold powder that's not terribly useful and we got token of sorrow not bad and we're going to take our mana tablet and this does require uh 50 000 life points so that's why we got our dagger of sacrifice i don't know how fast this is going to drain or if it's going to be slow as sin Looks like it's going to be slow as sin. Actually, it's not even crafting. Okay, what am I missing? Ah. Aha. These are too high. Now if we throw this in there. There we go. Now we're crafting. Let me get my... Uh, a heal spell up and going. This one actually drains a bit faster. Um, I mean, the speed is helping things too, of course, but... But it's nothing that Sacrificial Knife can't handle. I mean, there's ways to buff up. Of course, we're not even running any self-sacrifice runes. And uh, we could always do the the Brazier. But honestly, when you have super healing, it, it doesn't matter. Just spam it. Like that. And then just heal back up. There we go. There's our Blood Orb. Wonderful. And I'm going to go ahead and throw that in there for just a minute. Just so we get a little bit of blood in there. That's probably fine. Uh, go ahead and switch these. I'm not going to need this one anymore. Oops. But I do, while we're here, I do want this stuff. Because uh, this is going to give us our magnetism reagent. And I definitely want to pick that up. Because it's going to get us another spell off of this list. Okay, so there's our magnetism reagent. And then we're going to want a couple plant oils. Uh, so there's our two plant oils. Uh, one of these is going to go into making the impure white chalk. Okay, so there is our impure purple chalk. And then that goes into the tier 3 blood orb. 25,000 life points. What's the drain on this? Same as the making the orb. Okay, there is our chalk. And looks like we got a few quests completed. We're going to get an occultism epic loot box. With a gem book of binding. Not bad. Uh, we're also going to get an occultism epic loot box here. Which gives us another gem book of binding. Okay. I mean, they're not expensive, but we'll, we'll actually make use of that. So, uh, that's good. So, let's pop over. Uh, we're going to be doing Strigior's higher binding in this case. Uh, so, this is going to be... Four of the Spirit Attuned Crystals. Let me go ahead and pop back through. Because uh, I'm going to need two additional candles. Also, while I'm at it, I might as well go ahead and get our pull spell crafted up. So there's that. Alright, so candle there, candle there. Alright, and then to make the Dimensional Crystal Matrix... 
That's going to be the Calx of End, the Crystal Glass, and then the Corundum Clusters. Once again, we'll bind our, in this case, our Gen Books. Wait, I need, I need more of these. I'm making six and not four. But that's fine. We'll get that in a moment. There is our Dimensional Crystal Matrix. That's only 32 wheel. That's great. Okay. And then to get our Tier 2s. Uh, oh, yeah. I need the God Shards. And then I need the Ender Slime Crystal, which is just smelting Ender Slime Balls. Uh, which I actually have a bunch of those because we're getting them from our uh, Seal Farm. Uh, but let's pop over to the Blood Magic area, toss in that and that, and our Tartaric, and we'll get that crafted up real quick. So there's our Dimensional Storage Actuator, and that's going to knock out a couple quests here for us. We get an Occultism Epic Loot Box and a Tier 1 Dimensional Storage Stabilizer. Okay. Well, they give us a tier every, or an extra one every tier, so yeah, I'll probably... Maybe set up, uh, we got a block of Isnium. That's actually kind of useful. But okay, so, uh, pop back over. So yeah, I mean, it might be worth us making a second storage system down the road. I mean, it's not really a bad thing. Um, because we'll actually get most of our storage actuators for free. More or less, just from the quests. Alright, so for this one, we need the silver, which I've already got. The dimensional shards, which I've already got. Uh, the ender slime which is just uh, smelting these, so that's easy enough. And then we basically just need four of any god shard for this. So just whatever I can uh, get out of this is fine. Okay, that's actually enough to craft us five, and remember we're going to get a tier two for free. So I think that'll be good for now. I don't want to drain out a bunch of my god shards just yet. Can I not... Uh... Oh, it has to be blasting though. Okay. So this is something I can't I can't smell with my spell. And there we go. We'll get that going. And then of course we do get a tier 2 box or a tier 2 uh, stabilizer and we get another book of gin. Uh, and then we just have to after this one I have to craft three more. Basically what we brought the materials for. So uh, I'll be back here in just a moment and then we'll get this thing set up. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our dimensional storage actuator and we're going to put this in, say, right here. And then we're going to have, uh, well, I've got these signs here. But uh, I can maybe remove them. But basically, we just need these pointing in uh, towards this. So uh, with the tier twos, they're going to add a uh, well, is it 100 slots? Uh, or not 100, 500, I think. That's 640. It's 1152. Which I'll have to move the key, but that's fine. Or, well, it moved itself, so that works too. Uh, and I'll have to move this. Honestly, that, I'll probably end up moving all of that over to here. So, and one there. And, I mean, you can space, actually, this one... I'll put this one a little bit further away because it can go on that wall there. Uh, so we're up to 2176. And then, when, of course, we can also go right up here to uh, 2688. And then we'll put one in right there. But that way we have all six sides covered um, because they're all kind of looking at this little glowy thing. And that gives us 3,200 slots, which doesn't sound like a lot except for every slot can hold like a thousand items. So uh, it's actually quite a bit. And then of course we'll be able to upgrade this later uh, to the tier three and then to the tier four and we end up having uh, like 6,000 slots. So it can store a literal ton of things. Uh, and so at this point, what we're going to do is we're gonna take all three of these, uh, which this tag filter, I don't, we may not use it yet, in fact. Um, but we're going to put in a pipe there. And run this down. And this pipe is going to have the high filter module, the lowest priority, 
Well, that's only doing honeycombs, and we can't, we, aren't, we don't even produce honeycombs, and it's totally separate system, so uh, we're just going to leave lowest priority on there, and that'll be it. And then we'll just connect it over, because this is going to accept everything that's basically not going into drawers. So we'll do that, uh, and then at this point, we can take, throw all this stuff in. Oh, and let me disconnect this, and then we can just start tossing in all all this stuff and i'm going to get rid of all of our modded chests and stuff that are over there because we don't need them anymore basically everything can go into this and our system will still be able to access it so for example dimensional storage stabilizers there they are and we can order those and there's those um, i am going to get uh i'm going to get a high speed increase module um, because we will want that on this so there we go. Uh, and then at this point, we can basically just start taking all the stuff from all these chests and dumping it into here. Because this was getting, as you can tell, this was getting a bit overwhelmed uh, with items. And now we don't have to worry about that anymore. And then we're also going to go ahead and grab ourselves our Corporea Spark. If we take a look inside of here, you can see we don't have any dimensional stabilizers. Uh, but then if we put this on right there you can see that it registers and it sees those dimensional stabilizers that way we can have Batania read off of this as well so uh, which means we can get rid of all this stuff and then oops then I also need to grab our entangled binder and instead of sending the items to this like we were earlier this episode we are instead going to send them to this so from this, it's going to send over to there. And yeah, at this point, basically everything um, in all of these chests and over there and over at our old base and all that, it can all pretty much go into here or somewhere, you know. Uh, so I can just dump it into the storage. It'll get sorted and we can cut out a lot of chests and a lot of places where this stuff can go. Uh, now, technically, we do have... Um, the stable wormholes and the storage accessor stable wormhole we will probably use for some automation uh, a bit later storage accessor maybe um but it's not as important in this pack because we're going to have corporea for our remote access i mean there's there's well corporea and ender storage for like auto insertion and extraction so i don't know that we'll actually use it in this pack it does have a crafting grid which is nice but Corporea can plug up to all of our drawers, give us more overall access to our system. So I think it's going to be a little bit better for us. So we'll have to push on uh, to our final Corporea upgrade uh, here fairly soon. But but yeah, I mean, this pretty much solves our, our storage issues um, at this point. And of course, we're going to upgrade it further a bit later on. So... But anyways, it was a good push. We actually got quite a bit of magical progression done uh, this episode. And we have uh, the ability to automate all of our metals and not worry about how it sends those over, you know. So anyways, with that, we're going to end this episode out here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, I'll see you guys then.